All right, the following example here is a hypothesis test for a difference between two means. So a manager of a retail store wants to know whether there is a significant difference between two delivery companies with regard to the handling of fine china. In a simple random sample of 200 crates on one company's truck, there was an average of 0.8 broken dishes per crate with a standard deviation of 0.34, while a sample of 300 crates on a second company's truck showed an average of 0.87 broken dishes per crate with a standard deviation of 0.43. Is the difference between the averages significant? So to run the hypothesis test, the first thing we want to do is kind of get things in order here and understand exactly the information we have. First we have is company one. And company one had an average in their sample of 0.8 broken dishes with a standard deviation of 0.34. And their sample size for company one here was 200. And then we got the second company here. And that would be company two. And they had an average number of broken dishes of 0.87 with a standard deviation. And this is company two. Standard deviation of 0.43. And a sample size of 300. Now, um, what we do to got to make sure that we can even use a uh, normal distribution here, or we have to assume normality, and to make sure we got to check our conditions real quick. So the first condition is that both samples need to be random. Did say that. Second condition is that the both samples have to be less than 10% of the population, and I'm assuming that there are lots of crates of China out there. And the third condition is that the samples have to be big enough, and um, sample size of 200 and a sample size of 300 are definitely big enough samples to um, assume normality. Also, we have to make sure the two um, samples are independent of each other. That would have to be assumed. All right, so moving on, basically, we need our null hypothesis. Remember, our null hypothesis is the idea that the true average for these two companies are exactly the same. There is no difference. And again, there's two ways we could look at that. We could say that the true average for company one is equal to the true average for company two. Or a uh, quick another way of saying that is that the average for company one minus the average for company two is equal to zero, meaning there is no difference between the averages. Also, we have the alternative hypothesis here that we have to go with. And it did not specify in the problem that company one was better than company two, even though that's what the sample showed. It was never specified that. We were just simply asked if there was a difference. So once again, we could look at it as the true average is not from company one is not equal to the true average for company two. Or a, uh, another way of looking at that is that the difference from company one to company two is not equal to zero. So this is going to be a two-tailed test. We've got to keep that in mind later on. So the uh, first piece of information we need is what was the observed difference? The observed difference would be our sample from the company one minus the sample average from company two. And that would be 0.8 minus the 0.87. And that is an obvious difference of negative 0.07. And next, the kind of the, the, the tougher thing we need to calculate here is our standard deviation. Now, once again, this is where the T model has to come into play because we do not know the true standard deviations of the populations from company one and the populations from company two. So we have to use our standard deviations from our samples. So this is going to have to be a standard error. So this is a pro basically this is an approximation. That's why we're going to call it a standard error of our differences. And this is a uh, square root. And we need the 0.34 squared divided by the sample size of 200 plus 0.43 squared divided by the sample size of 300. And using our calculator, we can calculate that value to be 0.0346. And lastly, basically the last thing we need here is to calculate a t-score for this. And to calculate our t-score, we're going to go ahead and take the difference that we saw, negative 0.07, minus the difference that we were expecting. And remember, the whole time we were assuming that there was no difference between these two samples. And we're going to divide by the standard error of 0.0346. Now, if you recall in previous videos when we talked about the difference of two proportions, 
we had to do this thing called pooling where we put all the data together and pretended that, hey, if we're assuming that it's all the, all the data is the same, why not put it all together? You can do a pool test here when you're working with means, but um, you do not have to. It's kind of the key thing. Um, the AP um, people basically tell us that it's, it's always okay if you don't pool when you're working with sample means or the difference between two samples. So again, the um, standard or the t-score that we get here is negative 2.0231. And we need to find the probability of being less than this. Because if you think about the normal model, I'm going to draw a real crappy picture here of a normal model. Remember, we expected a difference right here in the middle. We're down here at negative 2.0231, somewhere right around down here. And that's pretty low. Um, but we need to find the probability of being below this. Remember, the uh, p-value is the probability of what you saw or more extreme. But again, we do have to calculate both tails of this as well from positive 2.02 above. So all we got to do is double our p-value once we find it. So we got to figure out how low is this, how rare or how unlikely is this value that we saw. So to calculate our p-value here, we use our TI-83 to TI-84 calculators. We run a TCDF. And we need to start at negative 99 because our value was negative, so we've got to look underneath it up into negative 2.0231. And I'm going to barely be able to squeeze in here our degrees of freedom. Remember, our degrees of freedom is 199 for sample 1, uh, 299 for sample 2. That's a total of 498. And I'm going to squeeze this in here 498 degrees of freedom. It's a pretty ugly looking 8 there. So anyway, with that uh, calculation, we get a p-value of 0 0.0218. And again, we need to multiply that by 2 because this is two tails, since we do care that it's equal. We're not claiming that one company is better than the other. And that gives us a final p-value that we're going to base our judgment on of 0 0.04. Now this is a very interesting p-value right here because um, depending what alpha level you pick or what significance level you pick, we might uh, cause us to have a different um, situation here. If we use a 5% level of significance, 0 0.05, um, we would end up noticing our p-value is less than this. So based on a significance level of 0.05, we have seen something unlikely and rare. So in that case, we would reject the null and go with the alternative that there is a difference. There is a difference, a non-zero difference between these two companies. However, if we would switch that up and go with an alpha level of 0.01, we would notice that we're not rare, we're not unlikely, so we would actually fail to reject the null, and we would have to continue claiming that there is no difference between these two um, companies in terms of their handling of fine china. So this is a tough decision. This is actually where, where error could creep in and maybe we make a mistake based on what alpha level we choose. And in a future videos we are going to talk about the two different types of errors you can have. So basically, you know, what do I choose here and, and how do I know what alpha level to choose? It's basically you want to make that determination on how strict do you want to be. Is this something that is really important to you and you really want to be strict? then maybe we want to go with the 0.01 and we're going to say, you know what, maybe we need to do this again. W what we saw wasn't unlikely enough for us and we want to be super strict here. But if we don't want to be super strict with a value of 0.05, then we're going to go ahead and say, yeah, we did see something unlikely. So at the value of 0.05 alpha level, we would end up um, rejecting the null. And remember what rejecting the null means. That means that we're going to the null hypothesis is incorrect and we're going to go with the assumption that there is truly a significant difference between these two trunking companies. However, if we want to be super strict and go with an alpha level or significance level of 0.01, we would actually end up failing to reject the null. And remember what that means. That means we're going to continue to keep assuming that the null was true and that we did see a difference but it just was not significant enough. So that means there actually is, or I'm sorry, I take that back, there is no difference. There is a difference of zero between these two companies. Yeah, we saw a difference, but you know what, everything varies and you are always going to see a difference. So um, we got step one here. We got our hypotheses. That was usually our, that's usually the first step. Step two is running through the conditions that we did talk about. Step three is showing all this beautiful, wonderful work leading up to your p-value. And then step four is making the appropriate conclusion based on your particular level of significance. 5%, we would reject the null because we're lower. 
1%, we'd fail to reject the null because we're not lower. So that's the basic idea here for a um, hypothesis test for the difference between two means.